Hi everyone, it's Marley here with Picmonic, and today we are going to go over some tips and tricks on how to master NCLEX style questions. So I know if you're studying for the NCLEX right now, you're probably a little bit of a basket case, and it's pretty scary, and it's a time where a lot of us are anxious. So um, hopefully these tips and tricks will help you so that you can go into the experience with a little more confidence and be a little less stressed. So before we start, if you haven't heard about what Picmonic is, what we do is we take all that really hard to remember information in nursing school and we turn it into fun pictures and stories and characters so that you can really recall that information fast, like for the NCLEX. And the good thing about using Picmonic is we cover over 900 topics in nursing. So we go from bugs, drugs, toxicities, reversal agents, lab values, everything that you need to know in your nursing school career. And then when you're reviewing for the NCLEX, it's, we got it all there, laid out nice and easy for you. So we are going to go over today the nursing process and how that relates to answering questions. We're going to go back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We're going to talk about strategies to answering those tough questions and tips for success. And then I'm just going to sprinkle in some practice questions that you can do with me together. So starting out, the basics. I know this may seem a little simple to you, but when you're first looking at a question, I know um, as you're starting out, what, I, what used to happen to me at least is I would look at the question and kind of get that overwhelming feeling like I used to in elementary school if I, if I came across like a word problem in algebra or something where you just kind of shut down. But the key here is to read the question and then let it sink in for a second and then reread the entire question, but ask yourself, what exactly is this question asking me? And I know that may seem simple, but when you, when you look at these questions, a lot of them are actually using the nursing process. So if we rewind back to the first semester of nursing school, and remember when they taught us ADPI? Yes, well, ADPI comes back with a vengeance here for the NCLEX. So a little secret tip here is that a large majority of the NCLEX questions that you're going to get are really just asking you to identify part of the nursing process. And it's really that simple. So if you don't have a good foundation of ADPI, the nursing process, um, I would definitely suggest going to our channel on YouTube, Picmonic Video, and watching our Nursing Fundamentals webinar that we have on there. It's really good. It's a nice basis of understanding for you to go and review. But really fast, I'll just go over um, a little bit of it. So if you just need a little refresher, ADPI stands for Assessment, Diagnosis, Planning, Implementation, and Evaluation. So what I always like to think about, um, I use a non-nursing example to really start thinking about it. So let's say that I, um, I, have, I brought my computer to school and I'm taking it out of my bag and it's broken. And I can't figure out why it's not turning on. So at this point, I'm just looking at all the data here. Like, I'm not really doing anything. I'm just like, oh, shoot, my computer won't turn on. It's wet. There seems to be water on it. It's cold. Nothing's happening when I try to turn it on. So this is just me collecting data in my head. And then, so that would be considered assessment, right? We're just collecting and playing detective. And then we go into um, diagnosis. So I would say to myself, okay. Well, I think it got wet because <laughs> it's not turning on because it got wet. I see from my um, interpretation of all my data is that it got wet and now I need to make a plan. So the diagnosis is just you taking that interpretation or taking all that data and then interpreting it. And then the plan is where I'm actually thinking about what I'm going to do. I'm not actually doing anything yet. I'm just planning it out. So I'm like, okay, got to go to the computer store right away. Um, I'm mapping out my route to get there, figuring like traffic and everything. So that's, I'm just formulating this plan. I'm taking the data, taking my diagnosis and formulating a plan. And then um, the implementation part is what comes next. So this is the action portion of this whole thing. It's when I'm actually just busting my butt to the computer store because I'm like, oh, I got to get this fixed right now. Then after that is the evaluation. So this is where they tell me that they fixed my computer and life is great again. Yay. So we, we evaluate, evaluated and our goals were met. So that is my um, whole non-nursing uh, example of AppPi. 
So when you actually apply it to a nursing example, you see that assessment is just detective work. So when you're thinking of assessment, I automatically think of a detective. I just think about, um, look, at, I walk into my patient's room and I'm just gathering data. I'm looking at their vitals. Are their vitals a little wonky? Are they having a hard time breathing? What are their reports? both in what subjective, objective data. So are they saying they're in pain? Um, I'm taking a health history. Everything here is just data collection. After that, we go into diagnosis, where we interpret the data. And this is where you're going to see your, your nursing diagnosis a lot with the NANDA and everything. And then we make a plan according to what our diagnosis was. And then comes implementation. So implementation is going to be the actions and the interventions. This is when you're actually giving medication and you're doing, you're doing, inter, you're actually intervening. Then we have evaluation, and this is where we see if our goals were met, and if not, we need to reevaluate and make some new goals. Some key words here to just give you a little trigger that they're asking an assessment question are words like assess, collect determine, gather information, do first, identify. These are kind of just key words that are asked that are that should trigger you that okay, they're asking me an assessment to do an assessment because a lot of the times you'll see in these NPEX questions that they're going to give you four right answers. They're all right, but you need to do one first. Right, one is right, the one is more right than all of the other ones, which we all love. <laughs> so the key to figuring those out is just ask or asking yourself really what part of the nursing process in this question, what part of the nursing process is this question asking me? So I'll show you an example right here. Um, an 82-year-old female has been admitted to the hospital with pneumonia and a UTI. She's been too weak to get out of bed for the past three days. As the nurse is giving her a bed bath, the nurse notices some new redness over her sacrum. What should the nurse do first? So when I look at this question, I'm looking to find those key words that are going to give me a little trigger that, okay, they're, they're asking me part of the nursing process, but which one? So I'm looking at the question. I see the, I see the words do first which I know is sometimes signals an assessment question. And then I'm also looking at the question saying, do I have enough data here? Do I need to see, do I need to do some more digging around? Probably. So in my answer options, I have use a finger to apply pressure to the red end area, notify the physician, apply a dressing to the area for cushioning, document your observations. So as much as all a lot of these may be right, I know that notifying the physician is going to, um, I don't really have enough data yet to notify the physician to understand what's going on. I know that applying a dressing to the area, that's an intervention. And am, am I ready to do an intervention? I always know assessments come before interventions. Document your observation, that's something we would do later on, but using a finger to apply pressure to the reddened area, that's going to give me a little more information on if this is a pressure ulcer and what stage it's going to be in. Because we know if we apply a finger to the reddened area and it does not turn white, then I know that's stage one, right? Because that's going back to my knowledge on pressure ulcers. So that would be the answer. It's asking me an assessment question because of the do first, and I know that applying the finger is going to give me more details to that. And always remember, assessments come before interventions. Always remember that. That is a very important thing to know. Um, the D and the P go, again, diagnosis and then planning. So interpretation of the data and then mapping it out. But in these two steps, there's still no action. We're still not doing any interventions. Once we get to the I, implementation, that is where we're intervening. That is when we're doing some action. Remember, going actually to the computer store, actually giving medications. So we showed that. We do have a lovely little ad pie pick monic here, and we show the implementation part as the implementing imp. So he is carrying his pie, his piece of pie, and you can always remember that in Picmonic as the imp actually delivering the pie. So keywords to trigger you to know that they are asking you an implementation or an intervention are things like action, next, implement, intervention. So these are all action words that should 
make you think, okay, I need to actually intervene here. Now, an example of a question like this would be, the nurse is assessing a 32-year-old female client who delivered a newborn three hours ago and notes that the client's temperature is 100.7 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the nurse's priority action? Okay, so getting into the flow here, we see in this question, I see priority action. So I know intervention right away. I'm like, whoop, intervention. Um, so I'm looking for the intervention option here. So I see number one, notify the physician. Number two, document the findings. Number three, retake the temperature in half an hour. And then number four, increase hydration and encourage oral fluids. So when I'm looking at an intervention, I also look at the question and I know that, okay, this woman just gave birth, and a lot of times um, after giving birth, a woman will have a little bit of a low-grade fever, and she's going to be dehydrated. So I don't think at this point that it would be wise to notify the physician um, and document the findings I'm going to do later on, but I'm looking for the priority action. And retaking the temperature, that's still an assessment. We already did our assessment. So number four, increase hydration and encourage oral fluids would be the correct option here. Make sense? So now we go into evaluation, and this is the last part of our nursing process, which is um, the E in ABPI. And words here, keywords here that are going to make you think about this is the evaluation part are evaluation, interpretation, and a lot of times you'll see which statement indicates dot, dot, dot. So that would trigger you to make you think that this is an evaluation part. And remember, read the entire question. So going back around again, just reread the entire question and ask yourself, which part of the nursing process is this? Is this question asking me? And that will help you for a lot of these questions. So moving on to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Another thing that we learned in nursing school that is coming back with a vengeance for the NCLEX. So Maslow's will be your best friend here because um, on those questions that they are asking you to prioritize your patients, who are you going to see first? And everybody kind of gets scared like, I don't know, everybody looks critical. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs is really going to help you here prioritize who you're going to see first. So when we look at our Picmonic on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we see that at the bottom of the pyramid, the most important things are physiological needs. So food, water, airway, circulation. Then from there, we go into safety and security, then love and belonging, and then esteem and self-actualization at the top. Really, what you have to think about is who is going to die first. That's always what you should be thinking about in these nursing and flex questions is which patient is going to die first? And that's my priority. The most critical patient is who I need to see first. And looking at that, you always have to think airway, breathing, circulation. So ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. Those are the most important things you need to be looking for when the question is asking you which patient to see first. So let's do a practice question. It's a busy day at the hospital and the nurse just got her patient assignments for the day. Which of the following clients should the nurse assess first? Great. I know this is a priority question. I see which of the following clients should the nurse assess, and then it's first. So I know Maslow's. I'm thinking Maslow's. I'm thinking airway, breathing, circulation. I'm thinking critical patients. Who is going to die first? So I look at my options. A client with a total knee replacement, two-day post-operative, complaining of a headache. Number two, a client who requires a complex dressing change. Number three, an irritated client who is anxious and ready for discharge. Number four, an asthmatic client with difficulty breathing. So, answer here. Who is the most critical patient? Who is really going to be the, the patient that I'm worried about getting worse or deteriorating? And the answer is option number four, the asthmatic client with difficulty breathing. Why? Because remember your ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. This asthmatic client is having difficulty breathing. And if you were tempted to go for the irritated client who is anxious and ready for discharge, this patient is stable. They're ready to go home. So yes, they're a little bit anxious and then maybe irritated, but they can wait. They are totally stable. 
Then we have the client with the total knee replacement two days post-op, complaining of a headache. So there's nothing that says anything more than just a headache. So that, that client, I'm sure he's uncomfortable, but he just has a headache. And he's two-day post-op, so he's pretty stable at this point, too. There's nothing that says otherwise. And then a client who requires a complex dressing change also doesn't say that they're more critical than the asthmatic client with difficulty breathing. So that would be our priority. Tips for success. Be careful with negative and positive event questions. And what are these? What are you talking about, Marley? So a negative event question would be something like, Blank, blank, blank. Which statement made by the client indicates a need for further education? So this is an evaluation statement. And these are, these are kind of funny to me. These always remind me of when I go into the voting booth, if it's time to vote, and those weird propositions that are worded weirdly, and you're kind of wondering, like, wait, if, am I voting for the right thing here? They're asking me in such a weird way that I don't know if I'm voting for the right proposition. But this is kind of like that. So. As an example, the nurse is providing education to the mother of a child with cystic fibrosis. The mother appears confused and overwhelmed with all the information she's receiving. Which statement made by the mother indicates the need for further education? So there's that statement. So here's what it's asking you. It is asking you to pick the answer that is incorrect as the correct answer. You see what I mean? Option number one. My child will need to follow a low-fat, low-sodium diet to help digest foods more easily. Number two, my child's glucose will need to be monitored regularly. Number three, pancreatic enzymes should be taken with every meal my child eats. Number four, a bronchodilator will be used as a part of my client's treatment regimen. So when looking at these, I know that three out of the four are going to be correct, and I need to pick the one that is incorrect. So in my knowledge of cystic fibrosis, I know that a child will need to follow a high-fat, high-calorie diet, right? Because we know that about cystic fibrosis. So option number one here would be the correct answer because the statement says, my child will need to follow a low-fat, low-sodium diet to help digest foods more easily. So that, because that's an incorrect statement, that is the correct answer because the question was asking us to to find the statement that indicates the need for further education by the mother. That makes sense, a little confusing, I know. All right, so an example of a positive event question would be something like this one, which is, the nurse is administering a tetracycline to a 24-year-old client. Which of the following statements by the client indicates an understanding of, medication, of the medication education? Select all that apply. Don't we love the select all that apply questions? Ah, you knew it was coming. So answer choices here. We're looking for the one that indicates an understanding. So a positive event question. So we're looking for the correct statement here. Number one, I will take this medication with milk if I get an upset stomach. Number two, I will avoid sunlight while taking this medication. Number three, once I feel better, I can stop taking this medication. Number four, I will, be, I will take an antacid with the medication if I get an upset stomach. Number five, this medication is not safe to take during pregnancy. So as a select all that apply, things with select all that apply, really, you have to make sure you know your content. Going back to no, knowledge of the content, you need to understand the, call, the content here because the worst thing with select all that applies is that if you know two out of the three and there's three correct answer choices and you only pick two, that question is still incorrect. So make sure you know your, um, your content for sure. But when I'm looking at touch cyclines, I know that I can't take iron, antacids, or milk with tetracyclines. I know that that is a no-no. So um, I know that number one is wrong. Um, number two, I will avoid sunlight while taking this medication. I know that people on uh, patients taking tetracyclines should stay out of the sun. So yes, that is correct. That is going to be one of my correct answer choices. Number three, once I feel better, I can stop taking this medication. No, we know we have to take antibiotics the full time they are prescribed. Number four, I will take an antacid with this medication if I get an upset stomach. No, antacids, iron, milk. Nope. And then number five, this medication is not safe to take during pregnancy. Ding, ding, ding. We know that. It is 
not safe to take during pregnancy. So in our answers, we have two and five are the correct answers because going back to the question indicates an understanding of the medication education. So do you see how these ones are a little tricky? Because the worst thing also with these is to really understand what the content is, but just reading too fast or just not paying attention, you could easily get those wrong. So don't do that. Be careful of those. And if you were a little confused about the tetracyclines and got a little overwhelmed, like, I don't know my farm, um, I need to do some reviewing, definitely check out our pharmacology webinar, Knowing Your Endings. Um, it is on our YouTube channel. Again, Pikamonic Video. We have a fabulous pharmacology webinar. I would definitely suggest reviewing that before you go take your inputs. Couple more tips. Don't add anything to the question. That is a lot of times what we do is we add things to the question that aren't there and go give you no indication that they're there. So don't do that. Just read the question as it is and go from there. And then avoid answers with definitive terms, such as always, never, most, none. Those generally, um, I don't want to say all the time, but a lot of the time they're incorrect. So those are some good tips to clue you in that that question or that answer option is incorrect. And then answers with open-ended terms are possibly correct answer choices. So these are things like generally, may, usually, commonly. These are often um, can be correct option. The nurse just received report for night shift. Which client does the nurse see first? So priority question, going back to Maslow's, crit immediately think Maslow's, critical patients, um, airway breathing circulation. So looking at my answer choices, an 88-year-old client with Alzheimer's disease who just pressed the call button, a 10-year-old scared diabetic client whose, mother's just, whose mother just went home, a 35-year-old client who just had an endotracheal tube removed and is experiencing strider. A 25-year-old client with an eating disorder and a nasogastric tube that needs to be flushed. Who do you think we need to go see first? So the answer is number three. 35-year-old client who just had an endotracheal tube removed and is experiencing strider. Why? Because when I think strider, I think possible airway obstruction, and that's what you should think too. So airway, breathing, circulation, don't forget your ABCs. And if you were tempted to go for the 88-year-old client with Alzheimer's disease who just pressed the call button and you're thinking, what if they fell? What if they're unsafe? You're adding to the question, which was one of the tips we talked about before, do not add anything to the question because what if that patient just wants more soup? or some water, or just wants to talk to you and say hello. So don't add anything to that question. It doesn't indicate that that patient is in danger of any kind. So definitely keep that kind of thing in mind when you're answering these questions. So that is all I have for you today, and I really hope this helped you study for your NCLEX because I know it is stressful, and it doesn't have to be if you just identify those key terms and really think about the question and what it's really asking you. So if you haven't already, definitely head over to pickmonic.com and try a free trial. And if you're a subscriber, we have a beautiful NCLEX pathway that we take all the high yield Picmonics you need to know to study for the NCLEX and lay it out nice and simple for you. And then if you are a subscriber, we will give you a little bonus of an NCLEX study schedule. So we scheduled your study plan out for you so you don't have to do any of that work because it's already stressful enough to have to study. So we, we laid it out all nice and easy for you. And then definitely go and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Picmonic Video on YouTube. And we have a ton of good webinars on there, nice reviews, some fun videos, always coming out with a lot of good stuff. And you can always reach out to us at feedback at if you have any questions or comments. And until next time, good luck studying. You guys will do great. Bye.